Right, it's a bit dreek today. And uh, we're off to a museum. Yeah, a dog-friendly museum. It, yeah, hopefully, if it's not changed. No, no, look, it's on the website. All right, OK. And it's Inverary Jail. Yeah. So we're going to go into in Inverary. We're going to take the van. Uh, to be honest, we're too old and lazy to walk. And it's really wet. And it's wet. I know. <laughs> That's the main reason, isn't it? It's too yeah, wet. Yeah, no, we were old and lazy there. <laughs> oh, is it that? Oh. Well, you could have gone on your bike. I could have gone on my bike, you're right. I'll get it in before someone else says it. <laughs> well, in Brary. The misty mountains in the background. Hopefully it's a little bit quieter than it was yesterday afternoon. Well, we did arrive sort of one o'clock-ish, didn't we? Yeah. So it's probably why it was so busy. the George, isn't it? The George Hotel. That's dog friendly, dog yeah. Dog friendly in there. I'm sure you're stopping there. You're going left here. Here? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Can't stay overnight here, but... No. There's out, can't welcome, really, very welcoming sign saying motorhomes. how the parking works here it seemed to suggest you only park for an hour but that'd be ridiculous <laughs> no i think it meant pound per hour so i did pay by pay by parking or something didn't I? yeah park to pay or pay by phone <laughs> pay by phone that's the one <laughs> it's, it's done three hours so should be all right for a bit that's something i've not seen before Yeah. <laughs> Water. <laughs> Very handy. All right, so we we'll head for the jail. Yeah. We can be one of the first ones there. And it looks like we've got a choice, perhaps, of eating places. I don't know. Yeah. And Bob Mackay always used to go to the George, didn't That's they? That's right. We did go there with them, didn't we? Yeah. Have a look at the vital spark later. Yeah. It's quite nice when it's covered in uh, people off a cruise ship. <laughs> Here's the George. Established 1776. Yeah, town hotel of the year. Somewhere. Our oh, dining hotel of the year. Okay. So that's the old town hall. Dogs welcome, there you go. Another dog here, perhaps. <laughs> <laughs> Blimey, he's a character, isn't he? Yeah. yeah. Got the audio guide as well. Yeah. Don't know if we're going to be able to do this. But... As you make your way up the stairs, you're about to experience firsthand the fascinating world of 19th century justice. Unlike many visitors between the years 1820 and 1889, however, You'll be allowed to leave these buildings whenever you wish. That's so a new exhibition in here. Yeah, it looks like it. When Inverary Jail opened in 1820, many of its prisoners would have thought themselves lucky that they had not been born a century earlier. In those days, 
Scottish justice was swift, Leave. painful, and often final. The displays in this room offer a vivid glimpse at some of the harsh punishments meted out to lawbreakers in the 16th, 17th, Ooh. and early 18th Brandon. centuries. Look for the picture of a man being whipped as he's dragged behind a cart. There is also an image on your screen. That's convicted thief Dougald MacDougald, who was sentenced to 39 strokes of the lash and had his right ear Ooh. nailed to the public gallows for an hour. In order to secure convictions, torture was a common way of obtaining a confession. On the wall behind you and on your screen, you can see descriptions of the boots and the thumb screws, both of which were used wow. to encourage an admission of guilt. You can try the thumb screws out for yourself no, thanks. if you dare. <laughs> in the second part of this room, you'll see descriptions of how, in the 16th century, Breaking moral laws were viewed just as seriously as breaking legal ones. Being drunk, not observing the Sabbath, and swearing were all sins punishable by public penance. A guilty penitent sat on a church stool in front of their community, dressed in rough sackcloth, or was secured in public stocks and pelted with rubbish. Dancing on a Sunday, playing the bagpipes, or even enjoying a game of cards were also deemed worthy of public humiliation. When you have finished exploring, make your way past the photo booth to the courtroom. Once inside, take a seat on one of the benches and select the corresponding track on your menu. After examination of the premises, I concluded that the fire had broken out in several places at the same time. I was Between 1820 and 1954, many thousands of men, women and children were found guilty and sentenced in this room. The majority of everyday cases heard here were for the sheriff's court. This was presided over by a minor judge or sheriff substitute who could sit and decide verdicts on his own or choose to put a case before a jury. The trial taking place here today is different. It's part of what's called a circuit court. These courts were held in Inverary twice a year and were very important events in the town's calendar. Circuit courts only dealt with the most serious of crimes and were presided over by a senior judge who traveled between county courthouses as part of an official circuit. Can you see the man sitting on the bench, or dock, at the front of the court, flanked by two police officers? He's also on your screen. That's the defendant who has been accused of a crime. Now look at the figure sitting on the raised dais opposite him, with his head resting in his hand. That's the judge who will decide his fate. Sat below the judge, around a table strewn with legal documents, are... Guilty, Your Honour! Guilty! I say he's innocent! The prosecuting counsel and the counsel for the defence, who present their version of the defendant's case to the judge and jury. The solicitors, who have drafted the legal documents on which the prosecuting and defending counsels have based their arguments. And the clerk of the court, who maintains an accurate record of the proceedings. The gentleman standing on the witness box is giving evidence under oath. So I said at the end, and I missed that bit, that women were not allowed to be jurors. The jurors over there in the, in the far corner, all men. Good day. And may I say what a pleasure it is to welcome such a fine personage as yourself to our humble correctional facility. <laughs> if the weather is fine, kindly remain standing here. If it's unpleasant, you can listen within the shelter of the prison. I am Duncan Campbell, custodian <laughs> or jailer, if you will, appointed by law to oversee this entire building and all who reside within. Although uh, I will own that I have no... Uh, specific training for the role. Uh, the time goes so fast. What year is it now? <laughs> 1825. Five years since this prison opened its doors. <laughs> Although, obviously, prison doors don't stay open for very long. So that's the old prison. 
here, 1820. Not the best place in the world to be locked up. No heating or washroom, ventilation is poor prison. Overcrowded, 24 men, women, children, a criminally insane, confined eight cramped cells. And that was the new prison they built, 1849. You wouldn't be so keen to get in here. <laughs> in <laughs> coming out for 20. six months or something. She don't like it, in there. <laughs> <laughs> Earth County Jail. Oh, <laughs> privy. Sorry. A little bit overcrowding. Often three or more prisoners shared a cell. Speaking Gaelic in here, complaining about poor conditions. Very sorry, I, I won't open this cell door. I, I don't think you'd want to meet Archibald McClellan. <laughs> or, or should I say, Mad Archie. Oh, my. Uh, Archie is our longest serving prisoner, 10 years so far, and it's, um, it's doubtful he'll see the light of day in this lifetime. His mind is, is unhinged and his crime is unforgivable. Don't defy me, Christian. I won't hurt you. Christian was, was Archie's daughter, one of ten children. <laughs> he beat her to death. His wife noticed he was behaving strangely about a week before the murder, but uh, well, never thought he would become violent. When he began to to rant and rave, she grew scared and, and took herself and her children to her sister-in-law's house. But in her haste, she forgot about poor wee Christian. She, she hurried back to get her, but it was too late. As she arrived, she, she saw her husband brutally beating the poor wee lass with a wooden stool. The law makes no exception in punishing female wrongdoers even if they have recently been brought to bed with child. Is that not so, Flora? Aye, Mr. Campbell. Oh, shh. Shh, shh, there, there. Shush now, Donald. The young Flora here is with us for the next six months because she helped herself to a shawl and some lace from a market stall. This was after the improvements then. 1820, cold, damp and overcrowded. 1841, clean and warm, but still overcrowded. 1841, it was women only. They moved to the new prison. They've got pipes in here, heating pipes, so they were actually kept warm by the, by the well, formerly central heating, really. And they put windows in for them, didn't they? Yeah. Originally, didn't have any windows. And room to leet to let. 26 days of joint application to be made to Duncan Campbell, jailer. Hugh Curry is off forever. <laughs> the Peter Campbell murderer. Ooh. Schoolmaster, age 40, Hilpin, murdered his aunt on January 11th, 1844, almost cutting her head off with a razor. <laughs> it's the day room. This and the one opposite. Yeah. It said they wasn't like all mixed together, people who hadn't been convicted yet and convicted criminals. Yeah. And uh, they had nothing to do. No. They just, they just sat in here. in here then? Yeah. Okay. And the washroom. One large room for the use of prisoners during the day. Prisoners were provided with towels, soap, hairbrushes and comb. I had to wash both in the morning and the evening. Or well, at least they were washing, I suppose. And that was a, for washing your clothes. <laughs> that was a fire. Sort of fire isn't yeah, it, it would have been a fire. Yeah. yeah. What's that? A bath? Could be. Mm. This was an airing yard. Yeah, that's what Cage like enclosures were built in 1843 allowed prisoners to be exercised in the open air. Men and women were locked up one to a yard for an hour each day, not supposed to communicate with each other in any way. I see you are admiring the new prison building, a fine structure. 
If you would like to walk with me towards the main entrance, I will show you its interior. I am Malcolm Thompson, prison governor. I trust you have met my wife Janet at the women's prison. <laughs> this building houses male prisoners in accordance with governmental policy, separating the genders. My appointment was based upon my years of prison experience, strength of character, insight into the criminal mind and powers of leadership, all traits sadly lacking in my predecessor. I am also extremely affable. Now we understand each other, I shall explain how order is maintained. In this prison, yep. all prisoners remain as isolated as possible from one another. This prevents them corrupting their cellmates into acts of pleasure villainy and is quite rightly known as the separate system. A man left alone with his repentance, prayer, simple work, and the strict moral guidance of God fearing attendants no. is far less All right, come to stray from the path upon his release. As you can see, there are four floors with twelve individual cells, three water closets. A washroom, warders' apartments, storerooms, and an indoor exercise gallery. Puppy. If ever there was a model prison, this is it. Follow me, and I will show you. Step lively there. Before a new prisoner is confined to their cell, their personal details are noted, and they are brought to this room for a thorough wash. What's your name, my good man? Archibald McAlpine, your holiness. <laughs> Mr. Thompson will suffice, thank you. Complete in 1848 was a model prison of its day, uh, designed to improve character and maintain the health of the inmates. Had to be exercised once an hour. All fit prisoners had to work for Bobby up to 10 hours a day. You know, made herring nets all picked open. Two services. And they had to take a test in reading, writing, and arithmetic. And there were lessons given by the prison, prison governor. It was in 1889, the cells on this floor were used by the police for more people than they could accommodate in the police station. Yeah. Come on. You're not sure about going in, you know. Go on, Pops. I'm not surprised. <laughs> <laughs> you think you prefer your castles, don't you, Pops? <laughs> a day in this cell. Prison opened 6 a.m. On Sunday, you had an extra day in bed. You had to wash at 6.15. Tidy a cell 715, eight ounces of oatmeal made into porridge. Sometimes you had treacle water as a substitute. Make your herring nets or pick your oakum. Exercise, or picking of oakum. Dinner at 1 pm, two pints of broth and 12 ounces of bread. Uh, that's what it said. And making herring nets. Supper, reading and writing at 6.30. Wash at 7.30, prison closed at 8, lights out. Prisoners here are serving short sentences, one year at most. Those found guilty of more serious offences are held elsewhere. If you peruse the register of criminal prisoners in front of you, you'll see that at Inverary, serious criminals are rare. We have, however, had some guests of note and if you will allow me a brief indulgence, I shall take this opportunity to recall three of them. Philip Turner and Pete Rennie were two of Her Majesty's sailors serving on the steamship Porcupine. The vessel was stationed at Tarbert, its presence enforcing a ban on fishermen using illegal trolling nets to catch herring. One evening, they were part of a patrol sent out to conduct a search of local fishing boats. Scottish fishermen not being enemies of the Queen, the patrol's muskets were supposed to be loaded with powder but no ball, any shot serving merely as a warning. During an altercation, however, a fisherman named McKeach was wounded in the shoulder by what was confirmed to be a musket ball fired by an overzealous or careless seaman. 
Following a thorough investigation, Philip Turner and Pete Rennie were charged with the culpable and reckless discharge of loaded firearms and sentenced to three months. The role of warder is integral to the smooth operation of the prison. The warder is responsible for the day-to-day -day administration of the male wing and is usually a retired soldier. As you can see, Mr. Henderson is busy with his duties, writing up entries in the register of criminal prisoners, no doubt. I am that, sir. Henderson's duties are many and varied. It is important that he is beyond reproach in morals and behaviour. He is also obliged to treat the prisoners in his charge with kindness and humility. We are here to facilitate reform, not retribution. circumstances in which the items displayed in this cell are used. Difficult prisoners pose a threat to staff, fellow prisoners, and indeed each other. Simple infractions are punished by placing the offender on a diet of bread and water or confiscating their hammocks. Oh, I'll kill you! I'll kill the lot of you! Particularly violent or disturbed prisoners can be tightly strapped into the heavy restraint jacket in front of you on the right. Behold the crack machine. is extremely beneficial for them and the community. However, when necessary, activity can also be used as a punishment. Hard labor, as it is known, serves no constructive purpose. It creates nothing and is deliberately repetitive, pointless and exhausting, causing the prisoners much distress. Prisoners sentenced to penal servitude are required to turn the handle of the crank machine as many as 14,400 times a day. And I've got a great, 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 great yeah. uncle who was transported to Australia, I yeah. think, and he landed about then, 1821. Yeah. He was the brother of my great, great, great grandfather who, when they lived in Norfolk. Yeah. And he escaped, oh. and I found all the paperwork for him on ancestry, all, yeah. the, all the reports, you know, what he looked like and everything when they were searching for him. And then eventually um, he was pardoned and yeah. he carried on living in Australia. Oh, wow. But that's definitely about 1821. Port yeah. yeah. They were saying 162,000 prisoners from Scotland, England and Wales were transported to New South Wales. Yeah, that's right, that's where it was. Yeah. I went, sent my ship to Glasgow, then to Grantham on the Firth of Forth before sailing down the East Coast. Uh, some went to Wakefield, others to Millbank. I spent nine months there before being sent to the work on the dockyards at Chatham. Convicts at work at the dock were held in ships or holes, are often rotten and severely overcrowded. Uh, well, the warrior prison hold once held between 450 and 520 men. And they're lucky to survive the sailing because look, it's taken four months. Four months, yeah, so they went to Rio de Janeiro first and then on to Australia. And we did well to even just get there. Yeah. Tried for murder. He was sentenced to transportation for life and shortly afterwards removed to Millwall Prison in London. Sheep stealing. Stole ten sheep. Some of the sheep were killed, others had their ears cut off, ensuring there were no identifying earmarks. Ten years transportation. Forgery. As governor, it is one of my most onerous duties to receive prisoners of tender years. The law makes little distinction as to the severity of the offence or the age of the offender. What matters is that punishment is seen to be administered and repentance encouraged. For the impoverished, a spell in prison is often considered little deterrent. Nice cells, nine to 12, prison surgeon. 
Okay. Weigh in prisoners. Nice fire. A microscope. And a prison chaplain picking oakum. Well, that looked horrendous. This is a typical prison cell. Quite, quite warm in here. Wooden bench, shelf. Yeah. Presumably these were the hammocks as well. And rules. Making herring nets. Herring nets rather. The prison was heated by a coal-fired system. To meet prison regulations, the cells had to be warm and well ventilated. So and that's what a modern one looks like. Yeah, it's a modern Bar cell in Barlini. Specifications are, this is how the cells are furnished today. Oh, quite warm in there. It's a bit of a struggle those first few steps. Photographic evidence. One of the first occasions photography was used in a court trial in 1908. We're talking about the last prisoners here. James Campbell, theft of a silver watch, 1881. Eight years penal sol servitude. 10th of May removed from the Inverary to Pentonville. John Fraser, a labourer of no fixed abode. Bode. James Edward Lyon, originally from Boston, Massachusetts, accused with Eliza Thorpe and Joseph Dowling of the theft of money. Admitted to Inver he was admitted to Inverary Jail and transferred two months later to Edinburgh to stand trial. Found guilty at seven years. Eliza Thorpe was arrested with him after two months in prison, sent to Edinburgh, and she was found not guilty and released. Club manager Joseph Dowling. Accused with James Edward Lyon and Eliza Thorpe of theft and reset of a pocketbook and money. Escapes here. 15 year old prisoner James McLachlan escaped from this prison in the afternoon, filled the water into thinking he was in his cell. He was actually in the water closet. As soon as the water left the prison, he went up the storeroom on this floor, found a rope, and went through the skylight. Warder realised something was wrong when he returned to his ro uh, room and saw a rope hanging down outside his window. <laughs> Clever boy. What's going on here? What's the canvas uniform? Yeah, if they destroyed their own clothes, they had to wear a stiff canvas jacket and trousers as a punishment. No. In the airing yard. <laughs> I'll lock you in here. Just leave you in here for 12 hours then, Pops. Is that all right? No, no. <laughs> it's only an hour, wasn't it? Yeah, so there's a kitchen shop and way out, but he says there's a Black Mariah. <laughs> yeah, an original police van, yeah? Yeah, Black Mariah. A Black Mariah to Garden Shed. Black Mariah was built in 1891 to move prisoners from police cells in Aberdeen to Crickinch's prison, two miles away on the outskirts. It was used as a um, shed when <laughs> it was moved to Cobblestock Farm near Peterculter. <laughs> he doesn't look too happy. No, he it. doesn't, no. <laughs> and today, prison buses have to move more prisoners further than their 19th century equivalents. Despite their colour, they're still called Black Mariahs. Yeah, I don't think it's the original Vital Spark. Just called that. Yeah. There's the bridge over there. I'm going over that tomorrow. It's at the bottom about the Duke of Argyll and building the keys in Campbelltown. Yeah. And it says from here follow the A33 through Mid Argyll. 83. 83, sorry. Through Ar Mid Argyll and Kintyre. See for yourself in travelling the footsteps of saints and kings. Well, that's hoping to do next year, isn't it? Yeah, true. True. Back of the pub here, the first house in Inverary. Thought it was you, Pops. It wasn't you, was it? 
No, a little doggy over there. So you Sorry? could probably sit there. It's got bars, it's got a bar and food. Yeah. Or do you want to go in there? Oh, well, I want to try the George, yeah. Well, this is the George. Is oh, is it? You? Yeah. Okay. It's the back of it. All oh, right. Go into the George. Come on, then, pops. God, I don't remember it so. No. Okay. Visit the bell tower here. Oh. Ooh. Good heavens. Right, there are 176 steps up to the top of the bell tower, and there's 10 bells up there and each bell has an intention to remember the fallen in the Great War. It started in 1923 and completed in 1930. Oh, here's the bell ringing. Okay, obviously still got a way to go. Here's the bells. Wow. Good heavens. It's still climbing. Wow. Oh, my Wow. Oh. Wow. Jailhouse. Out here as well. So campsites over there. Two and a half miles away. Scotland still has some surprises for you, doesn't it? Mate? I've forgotten about this.